Good morning, good morning, good morning. This is Jeremiah J. Man Manero with J. Man Seminars, and we're here with Millennial Who Talks, episode number 10. Lucky number 10, baby. Day after Christmas. Hopefully, you're all not out returning your gifts that people bought you. National Return Day. Uh, but we're talking here, Millennial Who Talks, changing lives with real stories from real estate rock stars from across the country. Uh, and just starting out, I want you, as you watch this broadcast, if you hear something that's share it. OK, if you hear something, some kind of information that you think would help your business or help a colleague of yours, tag them in the comments. OK, and if you want to hear more of the Millennial Who Talks series, all you have to do is type Millennial Who Talks in the comment. Forget the talks, just Millennial Who in the comments. My robot will will contact you and say, OK, you've been subscribed and you'll hear about only the next time we go live. Nothing else. I would never spam anybody that subscribes to the broadcast. So all that being said, we're here live with Chris Stager. He's from Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Chris, tell us a little bit about yourself, background, years in the business, all that good stuff. Good morning, Jay. How are you? How are you? Pretty good. How are you? Good. My name is Chris Stager. Uh, I'm a realtor here at Century 21 Pinnacle based in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Uh, Christmas City for all of you that know what, where Bethlehem is. But um, I've been in the business. I'm going now into my fifth year. Um, I started the business after after about a 14 and a half year um, business as a, you know in professional golf, which uh, J Man thinks is pretty neat. It can have its it can have its downfalls, but it's it it was pretty good. Um, so with that being said, I'm going in my fifth year, and um, you know the last 24 months have just been incredible. Um, so looking forward to talking about it today. So let's start in the beginning. You're a pro golfer. Okay. There's people sitting home right now going, this guy was living the life. I mean, it's not TV, I'm sure, but you're a pro golfer. At what point do you say, you know what? I want to get into real estate. How old were you? And like, what prompted that decision? I was actually 34, uh, believe it or not. Uh, when I started real estate. Um, and honestly, when I, I have an eight year old uh, son and a three year old son. And, um, you know, that that first year that my eight year old son was born, um, you know, I spent a lot of time away from home. And it, for the most part, it's you know, I didn't want to I, I, I looked at everything and I, I didn't want to miss that. So I really wanted to do something that I could if, if I needed to do something with them, I could go do it. Um, and real estate was really, when, when you look at it, was a great option um, from the outside. When you actually <laughs> get on the inside, um, right. when, you, when you honestly get into it, um, yeah, you, you don't have that much time. But uh, and if you want to make it work anyway, but in the long run, um, I have been able to do a lot, and uh, that's really the primary reason why I got into real estate. Um, not to mention, you know, I wasn't sure what I wanted to do for about a year, and um, kind of going over a few things and whether or not I want to um, pursue something else. And um, I have family um, in the business. My father-in-law is the broker uh, where I'm at, and um, you know, I have other family that works here as well. They're agents, top agents here in the Valley. And um, it just seemed like a fit. Uh, it's just something that, you know, sitting down with them and they're like, you really should, you really should do that. You're a people person. You like, you like to you know, talk to people and um, there's no better way to do that. So that's how I got in the business. Uh, and then it's the first couple of years were tough. Um, but then it's, it's taken off because I really didn't, I really didn't get into the business until really 24 months ago, um, actually in the business. So, so <clears throat> let's say this, I mean, normally people would think with the sphere that you might've had from pro golf that you could just hit the ground running, but what were some of the bigger challenges? <clears throat> and like a lot of people, I think get, get into real estate, flexible hours, Unlimited income is what you hear all the time. Like you watch TV and it's like, oh man, I'm going to, I'm going to get in here. I can do whatever I want, sell a couple of houses, make some money. But what, what was, what were some of the biggest challenges there in those first couple of years, just transitioning to a, it's totally different, right? 
even though you were was uh, in the business? Absolutely. Well, number one, I didn't have didn't I didn't have the belief that you know you have no money starting when you come into the business. You know, there are very few that actually you know they get, a lot of people get into the business thinking that exactly I can sell some houses, make some good money, and so forth. It doesn't work that way. Um, you know, when you're not when you have no clients and you're not sure where to get them from, um, you finally get that first house under agreement. And then two months later, you don't have that house under agreement anymore. But like, where am I getting paid from? Uh, it doesn't work that way. So the biggest challenge for me was actually changing the stigma of what I did. Uh, I am no longer a golf professional. I mean, there are people today that still ask me for lessons. I don't, it's, you know, I don't do that anymore. Um, so it took me a couple of years to really, everybody that I knew, my sphere that I knew, um, to let them understand that I, I don't play golf anymore. I sell real estate. And, you know, it took a little bit for them to take me seriously in that. Uh, and that's why, for me, the first couple of years were very difficult in, in getting started even more so um, because everybody knew what I did previous for 15 years. So uh, that was very difficult. It's almost like going to a new town, even if you sold mm -hmm. real estate, going to a new town and starting over. Um, but in this way, everybody saw me doing something different. That's what was the biggest challenge for me. So how, how did you do that? I mean, how it was, it just constant repetitive getting the word out. I'm in real estate, like you're a full-time realtor. This is what you're doing. And just kind of, helping to cement yourselves in their mind as this is what you do now as a kind of like repetition? Yes. Um, relationships, you know, it, you go to the, you go to your sphere uh, and only so much business will come from your sphere. Honestly, um, that, that does, you know, at, at one point in time go away as well. There's only, you only have so many parents, you have so many, you know, you only have so many relatives. Um, so that's eventually going to go away. But, in terms of the sphere of what I did, um, you know, I always thought, well, they already have a realtor, so I'm not going to talk to them. Um, so far from the truth, talk to everybody you can possibly talk to. I try and talk to 20 people a day of something about real estate, regardless of who they are, where I meet them, or whatever the case may be. Um, I could be in Starbucks and I'm going to, you know, the back of my computer has a somewhat of my business card. Uh, and there's always one person that will either come up to me or I, I hear something and I'm going to go talk to them uh, regardless. Um, so try and just talk to everybody you can, regardless of who they are. And that was really that really had helped. And especially within the last 24 months, that's really helped uh, in doing that. So in the last now, we, we put this in the teaser for our, our talk today. 700%, I believe, was the number just off the top of my head. Yep. Seven, I have to retype this so everybody sees it on the screen. 700%. Yes. Increase. So let's talk a little bit about that because I think anybody would even want one seventh of that, just a 100% increase or 10% of that, you know, 700% increase in, in 24 months' time, would you say, or what was the time frame? Within 24, within the last two years. Okay. So let's just talk about the first two years. Uh, I did seven transactions <laughs> uh, over the first two years. Um, and and to be honest with you, I didn't go to work. I got that whole time thing. <laughs> uh, yes, I have a <laughs> lot of time. Um, you know, and, and when you really sit down and, and I, it's too much time now. So... I decided that I, in, in 24 months ago, I said, you know what? I'm going to go to work. So I'm in the office every day. Um, I could work from home, but I have two children. That doesn't work. Um, as you know, you have two children yourself. That doesn't work. You have to go to, you have to go in the office. And I just decided to work. Um, I finally figured out, you know, I could see what was happening and I could see a little bit of success. And I was like, you know what, if I just, if I just put in the effort um, and did what I was supposed to do, uh, I can, it, I think it will turn around. And I just had to have that belief in, in doing that. 
um, from all the people that I've talked to, from everything, everybody that everything that I did looped up to that, I have a big social media presence. What am I doing with it? I'm not doing anything with it. So let's just go in and work. Call them. I message five people a day on Facebook. That is like my CRM. Um, just doing that, and with uh, within twelve months. You see the increase, uh, and then now by the end of at the end of 2017, I mean I'm going to be close to 50 transactions. By the way, that's without a cold call. Five people a day. So I just wanted to put that on there because it's such a transition from like I don't want to say old school, but traditional real estate was like hand out five business cards a day, right? And it's like. Well, with social media, I mean, that's kind of like your business card. You're, you're messaging them and having a conversation, right? Sure. Absolutely. Um, you know, and and you could do it on Facebook. Uh, you, can do it on, you can do it on Instagram. You can do it on LinkedIn. Um, you know, get on LinkedIn. I'm, you know, a lot, of, a lot of realtors have realtor friends that are on LinkedIn. Message them too. Why would you do that? Well, for instance, if I have somebody going in your neck of the woods, I'm going to, I'm going to, use an agent that I like and trust. Uh, so I'm going to send them, you know, your way, or I'm going to send them down to Jerry's way. Um, you know, it, it depends. You don't, it doesn't necessarily have to be individuals that are, um, that are going to be clients. They could be other agents that, you know, just making that make your, make your sphere bigger, basically. So <clears throat> on Instagram, you have a fair amount of followers. Yes. What is yes. it? Is it like 17,000, something like that? Or? I'm at 14. Oh, 14. Oh, you I was at, you're slacking. I was at 14 too. Uh, and over the Christmas break, I like to, a couple times a year, I, and you have to, I like to, a couple times a year, I go in and I look through all of the accounts. Uh, and I, if I see a spam account or if I see something like that, I scrub them and I get rid of them because they're useless to me. So um, I went back, I took out about 200 accounts uh, roughly over the holiday and went from 14 to 14, but you have to do that. It's not about the followers. Um, it's about the type of followers that you have um, for the most part. Uh, so like I said, we went live, a couple people went on, but by the end of the end of 24 hours, and I go check the stats of that live video, um, it'll be tremendous, uh, and it'll be people from all over the world. Um, you know, it's all about posting at the right time. It's all about engaging with people at the right time. And one of the biggest, I'll give everybody a little secret, <clears throat> which is not becoming a secret anymore. However. Um, Find influencers within your space, um, and they could be celebrity influencers. They don't just have to be, you know, they could be celebrity realtors. They could be whoever. Um, message them. Direct message them. Spend 30 minutes a day and direct message influencers within your space. It could be another realtor. It could be a developer. It could be... Um, I mean, it could be anybody. I mean, just your local business, you know, message the mayor in your town. Um, they're all, trust me, they're on Instagram. And if they're not on Instagram, they have somebody running their account. And you'll know. Um, if you don't get a message back, they probably have somebody, you know, running their account. Um, but there will be people that will message you. And you'd be surprised. Once you interact with them over a period of time, um, all of a sudden, you know, like I live in Christmas City. There's a couple of realtor friends that, you know, I have uh, <laughs> in Southern California. Um, you may know a few of them since well, some of them are on TV, but they turn around and they'll message you back. Um, you know, how's Christmas in Christmas City? How is, you know, how's your family doing? Um, and then that one time that they tag you in one of their Facebook posts because they've got 6 million followers, you all of a sudden have 300 followers overnight. Um, and it just, for people that want to see who you are. Uh, so 
direct met influencer direct marketing is really really big now especially on instagram um i've been doing it for the last five years uh and and you know there's a lot of a lot of people that are starting that's what you should be doing now um but that's one once again being ahead of the curve and trying to figure out what to do ahead of your other i don't want to say competition because there's you know we don't really have competition it's just everybody trying to um you know get better direct message influencers with one s <laughs> i said influencers influencers so i mean that brings up a good point especially with instagram like i know a lot of people i show them that feature they're like i never knew i could direct message somebody and it's just the fact that they, they didn't know just demonstrates that people aren't doing it so when you actually do get a message on there it's like whoa let me check it's not like an email where you have 300 or 500 that you're going to get today right it's like you get a handful of well you probably get more than a handful but most people get a handful of just the Instagram direct messages right and I think the response rate is probably through the roof com in comparison to like email or anything else Would sure you uh you know and I've seen a lot with um the Instagram stories obviously Snapchat was first and then Instagram stories uh you just need someone's attention um you know and and with what I like what I like about Instagram stories what you don't get with Snapchat stories is if I want to see that again, I can see it again. Um, their story, I can see their story two, three, four times if I want to. Uh, so the more you're putting on Instagram stories, it's like your day. I mean, it's not just a photo. It's not just two or three photos that you're putting up um, or going live. It's people, are, you know, we went to New York City for the holiday. People, I had, I tagged New York City. I had two, 3,000 people look at my story. Um, obviously, I threw in that I was a realtor and one of those blocks but um maybe somebody wants to move here from new york that wants to commute you never you never know so it's just doing those daily activity those day-to-day -day things and i can't tell you how many agents are like i don't have time for social media uh <laughs> i got news for you uh if you're not on social media first of all um you're gonna lose because we're gonna social media will be gone I predict in the next six to seven years, um, and we'll, we'll be doing everything through VR, virtual reality. So you heard it here first. Six years, it's all gone, folks. You better get uh -oh. on it. <laughs> but at least get on. If you say you don't have time, then you're really missing the boat here. Let's talk a little bit about content because I think that's that's what people struggle with the most is what to hurts my soul when I see people like just sold, just listed, just sold, just listed. I'm the best, won an award, like that kind of stuff. What what's your what's your daily post? Like what's your stories like? Just to kind of give people an idea of what what's the most engaging stuff that you you put out there? Uh my kids and my my pets. Who doesn't like children and who doesn't like pets um, you know <laughs> right you can sprinkle in a little bit of just sold just listed you know I like to keep just I want to I want to say this too um, everybody's always trying to keep things separate everybody has a personal account everybody has a business account um, I I have one I mean I have I have a business page but everything you see on both pages is the same um, I'm putting my personal, I have one Instagram account. It's personal and business all in one. Uh, I have it set up as a business account because I can, I have, uh, you know, email call feature directions on it. But if you looked at, you scroll down the feed, it's a lot of personal, um, you know, in terms of content, um, <laughs> children and pets, uh, but <laughs> you, um, I try to keep it a third, a thir you know, a third real estate, uh, a third, you know, like I said, I live in a, I live in a, an awesome town. I live in Bethlehem. We have Allentown. We have Easton. Like I said, Easton's famous uh, Crayola factory. We have, I was just telling <laughs> J-Man before we came on uh, for New Year's Eve in Bethlehem, we have a Peeps Fest. Um, those 
Peeps marshmallows that never expire. Um, <laughs> they are dropping one at New Year's Eve on our <laughs> in our town. So um, I live in Christmas City. We have um, sports teams. We have a lot of uh, we have Iron Pigs. We have all kinds of stuff. So I like a third of it. I like to have as what's going on in our town. I like to do um, you know a spotlight of uh, we just had Miss Pennsylvania. Um, you'll see, I did a spotlight post of her, what she's doing in our community, um, just stuff that's going on in our community. And then the other third is my family, personal, what's going on with me. Um, you know, I, I set expectations for my clients. All my clients are friends on all my social media. Um, there's not one client that's not, um, unless they're not on social media, but you know, if I'm, if I've shown you houses for two weeks and, you know, I tell you that. I'm taking my children to the zoo and, you know, my clients know that up front. Um, you know, we all have a life. We all, we all have other things that we do um, and they respect that. So um, that's one of the biggest things I can tell you in terms of your content. Keep it personal. Um, I have so many agents that come up to me when I, when I teach about Instagram and content. They, you know, what am I supposed to create? What am I supposed to create? So don't create. Document what you're doing. Um, you know, if you're sitting in a, if you honestly, if you're sitting at an open house and you don't have anybody coming to your open house, sit there with, you know, go grab a bottle of wine in your car and, you know, put up a Facebook post saying, what am I supposed to do? Nobody's coming to my open house. I guarantee you that post will get more traffic or go dance around the empty house. That post will get more traffic than anything. And then, Right after you put that post up, put some pictures of the house that you were at that nobody came to um, because people are going to see you and then they're going to see that and they'll put two and two together. Um, stuff like that. Just document what you're doing. Keep it personal. Yeah, I like that because, like you said, if people don't like, know, and trust you, they're not going to do business with you. Forget about everything else. You know, and, and a big part of that is core values, and that's what you're hitting home, right? You care about family. That's part of the reason why you got into real estate. Your exactly. first son was born, right? And uh, you said, I got I to gotta change I, something. I keep a lot of relation. I mean, I have a lot of relationship with clients, you know, just because of being online. Um, if I go to, you know, a lot, a lot of times I go to a listing appointment, I'll be honest with you. They do not care um, how much production you've done. They don't care what company you work for. They don't care about all of that. They care exactly what you said. They either going to like and trust you and want to work with you or they're not. Um, I feel if you, and I have clients who I haven't sold a house to yet that are still on my Facebook or on my Instagram and they see me through the holidays. They see certain things. I go to the house. I've had people sit down and go, I, I, I feel like I already know you. I feel like you're, you're part of our family. Right. Like, you know, we've been, conversing on online for two months and you know now we feel like we we want to we want to sell or we want to buy and we know you so it's one of those <clears throat> yeah i mean it's so great when you see them and they go oh man it looks like the kids had a really great holiday and you're like oh yeah i forgot we're, we're friends <laughs> exactly but use it to your advantage don't you know don't discredit that you know a lot of well, there's a lot of agents that go, I don't want them knowing about my personal life or how many Instagram accounts I go on in their private. Um, let people know what you're doing. And, and <laughs> this is really funny. And, and I want to point this out. You'll be a lot more conscious about what you put online when you decide to put something online. Because um, when, you know, when I started putting stuff online, if you go way back, uh, I'm sure you'll find some interesting things online um, when I first started to post some things. But, you know, when you realize if you have children and, you know, everything that we do today, everything's put online. So, um, you know, if something happened years ago with your great, great grandfather, they just moved, they, they could move towns and nobody knows. Them. Your kids are going to, your children are going to know, and then your children's children are going to know who you are because of what you've posted online. That will never go away. Um, so you're a lot more conscious about what you put online. So why separate the two? It's a great point. Um, 
let's let's talk about the balance then you know having the kids three and eight right three and eight three and eight mine are two and seven so i know i'm like a year behind you but same same distance apart how how do you find the balance between work and family like what what are some systems that you've implemented or or you know how do you do that you know being doing the amount of transactions that you're doing now how is it possible to find that balance uh, I don't work on Sunday unless it's an absolute emergency. Um, and I'm, by emergency, I mean you can text or call me and I'll talk to you. Um, but I'm not going to show any houses on Sunday um, unless it's <laughs> within a five block radius of my house. Um, you know, it's just it's, it's family time. And I set that expectation when I sit down with my clients in a buying interview or a listing appointment. Say, listen. You have a life. I have a life. I am not at your begging call um, 24 seven. Uh, there will be a, on Sunday. If it's an emergency, call me. Um, but, you know, I set that expectation ahead of time. That's number one. You have to do that to find balance. Um, you know, and I try to I, like I said, I go to the office every morning and I try to leave the office. Um, if I, you know, I have my appointments throughout the day where I'm in and out, but uh, for the most part, I try and be home by six o'clock if I can, um, you know, with the kids after school um, and come springtime. Like right now, my oldest son is playing basketball and then baseball will start. My youngest one will have swimming. So I try and schedule my my little son who has uh, Parker, who's got uh, swimming. I schedule that hour in my calendar but I'm going to stop at the Bethlehem Community Center and I'm going to watch him swim. Um, I can still be on the phone, but I'm not at an appointment. Uh, I coach baseball. So, um, that's five days a week and, uh, for my oldest son and I schedule it like any, any other appointment is, um, it's just something that's in my calendar. You have to do it. Otherwise, you know, I've had times where I've not put stuff in my calendar and I've been in two places where I should have been in one. Um, but you know, that's the only way to do it. Honestly, you know, schedule date nights with the wife, schedule certain things. You have to do it. Um, and you'd be surprised, you know, 24 hours in a day. If you work eight hours a day, you sleep eight hours a day, you still have a lot of time. Um, right. As long as you prioritize things and you do things correctly, um, this should be it's really not that difficult. Um you know, you just you have to set the expectation with your clients and let them know, you know, if you're calling me, I'm not running out within 10 minutes to meet you. That's not happening. You're going to have to set an appointment to go see that, you know, and in a, in a fast market like we're in now. I've probably lost a client or two uh, with doing that, but I've also picked up five or six behind that. So um, just because they understand. And, and like I said, there are exceptions because of the market we're in right now. Um, yes, there's a few things that we do jump on quickly, but at the same time, if I can't do it, I have other agents that I would prefer, I can refer to, you know, there's always ways around that time. So you can always schedule time. That's how you balance. So I like it. And you're out of the, like, like the 10 interviews that we've done, probably half of the agents that we've spoken with that are successful agents. When we ask that question, how to find the balance, it's all about Put it in, schedule it and forget it. I feel like that old infomercial guy, like set it and forget it, <laughs> like put it in the calendar. Yeah. Right. And then Absolutely. it's an appointment, just like you said. And if you're, you if, if you're a new agent watching this right now, that's, and it's one of the things I struggled with as a new agent. I'm sure Chris did as well, that you're, you run to go at the beck and call of your clients, but you don't have to, if you set those expectations up front, just like Chris said, and we've had, you know, numerous people on the show that have said this, they will respect that because people have families. And if they don't, then you don't even want to work with those. Right? right. I mean, like you said, you lose that client. So what? It's not the end of the world. I'd rather have, you know, watch, watch my son in swim class or, or coach my son playing baseball than, than that one transaction. Exactly. And you, you know, that one transaction, do you really, the fact that they can't respect that, do you, you're right, you don't, do you really want that client? Cause you know, what's going to be coming in the next two months with that client. You don't, you don't really want that. Um, it's just going to be more headache than it's worth. Uh, and you're just better off not doing it. Just 
refer it because then you still get paid. So <laughs> refer it to somebody else. Right. Um, but yeah, absolutely. That's the only way to do it. Set it and forget it. Um, it as we're talking about the relationships, though, uh, that's where all of that comes full circle. Um, they already know you. They already know you. They know what you do. It's not like you can say, uh, I can't meet you because I have an appointment and then they see you right somewhere else. Um, you're up front with them right from the beginning. And but those are the relationships that you create ahead of time. Um, and I when I first got into the business, I saw that I saw a void for customer service and I saw a void for um, just every, everybody was about the low, you know, the now now business now business because you are new and you kind of need the new business, um, which is something that I know we're getting to uh, probably the last question, but um, of, of what you would change. But I, I would say create relationships from the very beginning. Um, you know, the market, the market is great right now. The market will take a turn. It's just inevitable to what it does. Um, and the only way you're going to be prepared for that and the only way you're going to be able to um, to get through that down market is if you have those long lasting relationships that you can, that you've, you've been now creating over the last five, six, seven years, um, those people are going to want to work with you because you have that long lasting relationship. So, you know, that's how you're going to get through a tough market. Um, that's how you're going to get through anything. And you'd be surprised. That was the big shift that I made 24 months ago. Um, because I saw that void, I see so many, so many agents that, you know, they'll do a transaction and I'm like, when's the last time you talked to that person? Uh, right. Two years, two years ago. Great. I'm going to send them a Christmas card. Uh, <laughs> you know, I'm going to give them a call. It's just one of those things that, um, you know, you create those relationships, just create the relationships because you'll see, you'll see when you get to your year five, year six, year seven, um, you have all the sphere you need at that point, um, you know, until you want to grow and and for that. Exactly. Uh, create relationships, not transactions. So I guess you've answered my last question. You knew what was coming already. But if, if, if you want to maybe expand or add to it, if you were talking to young Chris Stager <laughs> or just a new agent in coming into the business, who wasn't a pro golfer for 14 and a half years, what kind of advice would you give them, you know, knowing what you know now and, and being the social media kingpin that you are? <laughs> social media kingpin, I can believe I just said that. Um, what kind of advice would you give them? Uh, I would say don't look for the now business because the now business will always be there. Um, Look for, figure out where you want to be in in five, ten years uh, and do the things on a daily basis today that will bring somebody that will give you that business five, ten years from now. Um, create the relationships with all kinds of people. Um, create the relationships with realtors, um, you know, other people in your industry, other, you know, just all around relationships everywhere. Um, that's number one. Uh, and number two, jump in. Don't be afraid. Um, little quick little story about me is, um, when, when I first jumped into this business, uh, my little one was being born. Uh, so we wanted, I wanted my wife to stay home with the little one. Um, we knew it would be difficult cause now I'm starting a new career that doesn't pay you. Uh, <laughs> unless you actually do work um you know I've, and as most most brokerages don't give you insurance uh so that's a big scare there's a lot of things that are are scary when you're jumping into real estate not to mention all the statistics um where 90 percent fail uh which we don't like um and now i don't have a spouse that's has an income. So what do you do? Uh, I worked at night. Um, you know, I worked 6 PM to 2 AM and another at another job because I had to, um, 
because I was afraid that I wouldn't real estate wouldn't be what I thought it could be um, because I just didn't know any better. Uh, and from that, you know, I needed to do that. Um, but at the same time, it was hard to leave that and actually jump, jump all in. Um, I would say if you're going to be in this business, you have to be all in. Uh, you can't, you can't do, you can't do it part time um, for, for, for a lot of reasons. Uh, you have to jump all in. And, uh, you know, that's, that's the biggest thing, you know, make, make sure that you, you, you can do that. Otherwise you're going to have a hard time. And it, it's, it's really great advice. So if you're watching this, you're a new agent, you're working that part-time hustle, you know, the, we call part-time job or you're bartending, you're doing like go, all, I know it's scary. We've anybody who's been in real estate at some point has to say, this is all that I'm going to do. I know yeah. it's very rare to find somebody who's like, I'm super successful and I do this part time unless they're in like a, you know, seven figure market, maybe. Right. That's, exactly. That's, that's like the smallest percentage. Average price in my market is between 185 and 200. So we got to do a lot of transactions. Yeah, I'm in the same boat. 123, 576 here. 123,000. So transactions is, is, is what we have to do. But we create relationships, not transactions. That's correct. So. And, uh, I see Jerry's on here. Jerry, good to see you. Uh, glad you're watching. It was good to see you at Triple Play. Hope we can do some more. Shout out to Jerry Knows North Fork. We love you, man. I, I don't want to attempt to say your last name, Jerry, because I always mess it up. So uh, anything in closing that we want to say, just motivate, favorite quote, anything like that? Um. <laughs> Uh, yeah, work, <laughs> <laughs> work, hashtag work. Uh, and, 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 uh, you know, <laughs> who you work with today matters. Um, without a doubt, who you work with today matters. Who you work with today matters. I'm going to add one, my favorite from Les Brown. We must do the things today that others won't do so that tomorrow we can have what others won't have. That's Les Brown. So please, if you like what you heard today, subscribe below by typing Millennihu. Our Autobot will contact you and say that you're subscribed. Uh, but please follow Chris Stager. It's Chris Stager Realtor. Yes. Instagram. Okay, Chris Stager Realtor on Instagram, and it's the same on Facebook as well, I believe. Uh, it okay. is. Uh, and buy, sell, live Lehigh Valley on Facebook. Uh, and I do want to say this, consult your local uh, association with rules and regulations, uh, with your, with even your, your Instagram handle. Um, it's very important uh, that you do that because mine has changed three times. And the biggest thing is uh, when you do have a good following and then you have to change your handle, it makes a big deal. Uh, I lost quite a few people with that. So um, check with your association for rules and regulations. So we'll end on that legalese. The opinions stated in this broadcast are only our opinions. They're not the official statements of any local board, state association, or national. So consult your local legal people. Thanks again, Chris. And we hope everybody has a new year. Uh, don't wait till the new year to get started. Get started now when you have this downtime between Christmas and New Year. And uh, reach out to Chris. I'm sure, like you said, Instagram, message him. There's not a lot of people doing it. He's more than happy uh, to help you out. So thanks for tuning in. Hope everybody has a great day. Absolutely. Thank you, J-Man. Thank you.